Hi, everyone. My name is William Carter. I am the CTO of the XX Network, and I'm here with our CEO, David Chom, uh, to talk a little bit about how payments have been evolving over the last few decades as we've moved from a primarily cash-based society uh, to having digital payments that are facilitated by banks uh, to cryptocurrency and even more recently, um, some decentralized finance. So we're going to take this opportunity today to take a step back from the DApp and the second layer hype uh, to revisit the core primitives of kind of what makes a good payment, as that's really what the basis uh, for the blockchain ecosystem has traditionally been. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about what the motivation for this evolution was and how the characteristics of a payment have kind of changed over time. And then finally, we're going to talk about how what we're doing at the XX network is, is really critical to the continued growth of, of the cryptocurrency space. Um, now, David Chum here, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, is an expert in payment technology, having really invented electronic cash. Uh, he set the first digital payment over the internet, as well as discovered much of the cryptography that is used in cryptocurrency and also in other areas uh, where privacy and security are critical, like electronic voting uh, and communications. So today he's leading our team um, in developing the next generation of layer one blockchain protocols um, at XX Network. And uh, I'll let him speak a little bit more about his background and what we're doing here. My dissertation at Berkeley had been about blockchain. So that was well before most of anything you've heard about. So that was uh, appeared in 82. And you can see that on my website at charm.com if you'd like to read it. So, but um, uh, in any case, then in, in the mid 90s, uh, after we made that first payment, we launched Cyberbucks, which was kind of like Bitcoin. It was just a freestanding currency. We capped the total amount. Anyone who set up a shop, we would airdrop them 100 of these Cyberbucks. And then we also helped like Deutsche Bank. Uh, which was the largest bank in Europe at the time, and then banks in Australia, the U.S., and so forth, issue national currency denominated uh, e-cash. And uh, this was available in, a, in quite a number of currencies, including Deutschmarks in those days from Deutsche Bank and Australian dollars, U.S. dollars, and so forth. Um, so th that was the original form of uh, electronic money, a sort of, I call that Bitcoin zero and then of course when bitcoin one happened made a lot of people a lot of money and it was a i think a, a world changing thing so I, I it's 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 a huge big deal it's it's changed everything and now what we are doing at xx network is we are creating what you might want to call Bitcoin 2. And it's a far superior infrastructure for distributed finance and for, for electronic payments uh, in a number of ways. And it's starting to run in beta and alpha. And I can tell you a little bit more about it later, but uh, uh, it's actually targeted at personal mobile so it, it's a it's a quantum resistant very high throughput low latency ultra secure payment system that provides proof of finality that can be easily checked on smartphones you know everyone that's especially involved in the cryptocurrency space can kind of appreciate that vision of, of, and I think that was really what Satoshi probably had in mind with Bitcoin was, yeah, replacing the core fundamental infrastructure rather than kind of building on top of what existed. Um, uh, so it, it, I think it becomes clear that, you know, in order for this cryptocurrency space to keep growing and evolving, uh, we do need to make sure that the the core primitives of a payment that, you know, that, that that core transaction of, of sending value from one person to the other, um, that that's as secure and robust um, and fast as possible. And I think when you won the Dijkstra Award in Amsterdam, you actually laid out a set of, of requirements that a layer one transaction platform should or must meet 
um, in order for you know all these layer two solutions and um, these D apps that are building on top of it to really reach mainstream adoption. I did give like a one hour uh, lecture and focus it on our XX technology and it's probably worth uh, looking at if you want to get you know deeper understanding and intuition about how it differs and how it really works uh, in addition to the webinars that, that you know that we have up and, and the white paper and all that but um, the, the, the main thing is that you know when you when you step back and look at the need for a layer one infrastructure it's pretty clear that you must have scalability to tens or maybe even hundreds of thousands of transactions a second ultimately and it's also i believe essential for consumers that there's a kind of you know what's referred to in payments as finality in other words irrevocability and completion of the payment transaction within a few seconds and ideally that should be something that the user's smartphone has a proof of so it a uh, a, a signature by some some authority that like the blockchain that's easily verified by the phone that says that that uh, transaction has irrevocably completed successfully in favor of the, of the user and so that's the say the latency and the the third and final requirement is and you might just call it security but actually I think and perhaps it's not that you know happy a thing to have to say so but what we're really talking about here is take down resistance you know some national adversary or powerful actors might decide that they don't like you know a certain chain and I don't believe that current ones are really have that the, the kind of uh, uh, robustness to survive against a, a, a you know a, a tax with it that bring a lot of resources to bear and there might also be a lot more progress in the quantum computing space than is made public because that would be the high value use of it right to to exploit cryptographic systems uh, well in advance of, of the technology being known so uh, what you really want is something that simply cannot be taken down by someone with quantum computers or someone that has a lot of uh, nodes that they can spin up, uh, uh, people, uh, you know, mining capability or, or what have you. You want something that's really, really uh, solid to, because this is a very important infrastructure and also many people use payment systems, you know, of this type as store of value. So that's the, the, the final uh, critical aspect is the, the resistance to take down.